Hey guys, today I'm going to be going over how to make this biomolecules review game. This is my adaptation from an activity that I saw in my AP Summer Institute with AP by the Sea. The presenter was Debbie Richards and she shared this document with us. This is four pages. Normally, if we were doing this in person as a class, uh, in groups, I would print out all of these. I would cut, actually, I would print out only the first three pages. This is just showing what the setup looks like if you were to put tape on a desk. All you need is to make four quadrants, one for each of the biomolecules, and then you would print out each of these cards. Each group of three to four students will have one deck of these cards, and they will divide the cards amongst themselves. So there's 36 total, perfect for a group of three, each student would have 12, or a group of four, each student would have nine. And what students have to do then is they have these random cards, and they will take turns placing each of their cards onto into a specific quadrant. They can also place the cards on the lines. So each quadrant represents a macromolecule and students have to explain why they're placing a specific card in a specific quadrant. So if they designate categories for these quadrants ahead of time, for example, carbs, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins, then when they see, let's say, contains uh, RNA, DNA. That's an example of a nucleic acid. They would put it in the quadrant that they designated nu nucleic acid. And in the process of doing so, they also have to explain why they are putting a card in a specific quadrant. Their team members, their team members would then have to either agree or disagree. If they disagree, then the person has to give more explanations as to why they want to put their card down in that quadrant. So it's a very uh, verbal game. It's a great way to get students talking, to get them thinking, to get them communicating with each other and learning from each other as they review all the properties and characteristics associated with these four biomolecules. So that's how I would have done it if we were doing this in person. Since we are doing distance learning and I can only see students on the screen, they can't uh, they don't have anything tangible to work with. I have made this adaptation here. So it's on Google Slides. Here are my directions to my students. I'll be going over that with you guys. I made this, um, this cross, and then I, I'll show you how I made this later. I'm just going over what this looks like. So here I have each of these. So actually, I'm going to go back here and show you. So all of these cards, I pretty much just used the snip function, which looks like, oh wait, um, press the windows, and then I just type in snip, enter, and a new uh, snipping section. And then I just go like that. I just click on my keyboard, I click control copy to copy it, and then I close this, and here's my new Google Slides that I'm going to be working with to just show you guys how I made each of these over here. So I already copied one of these, I'm just going to press control and me to paste. I'm going to close that. And now this is just a movable image on the slide. You can minimize it, maximize it. I just minimized it so that all 36 cards would fit onto one slide. And then to kind of color code the different cards so that each student had their own set of cards to work with, I used this border function. I made it three, a uh, thickness of three pixels, I guess that's what it means here. And then I just chose a color, like that. So here's one of them. It was kind of tedious doing all 36 
making all 36 of these, but I did one set and then I just, you know, copied and then pasted everything and then copied everything again. Let me see if I can just, uh, so yeah, the styles are a little bit different. I can adjust that later. I'll just match styles to this presentation. And then what you can do is um, highlight all of them, and then you can easily change the colors. And that's how I made, I color-coded the different slides so that each of my students can have their own little color to kind of represent them. Okay, so that's how I made each of these. For the, for the photos, I actually Googled the photos. I didn't use the ones that were included on here. I just found in Google Images each of these, and I inserted them. I actually, I think I still have them, so I can show you. Let me go to this slide. Insert, image, upload. And here, I, I still have all of these since I did this really recently. Click on that. It's going to show up pretty big. You can minimize it again. And then just change the border pixels, change the color. And there you go. So that's how I made all of these. Now for the background here, you, can, you might notice that I can't move these lines. That's because I have made this into a background. I'm going to show you how to do that. So actually, before I do anything else, let me change the page settings. So let me go back since I'm moving a little bit fast. Click on File, go to Page Setup. You are going to go to Custom. I wanted this to represent the size of a normal piece of paper. So that would mean 11 by 8.5 inches. So it gives me this. I'm going to delete these because we're not going to be using these. And then using the line function, I just kind of eyed it since it's, I don't really have a ruler or anything. It's kind of straight, I think. And then I can move it a little bit. And then I'll make the other one going this way. Well, this is a little hard for me because I can't really can't really see my okay let me just go here that work let me move myself up here actually i'm just going to close this for now then i can draw an actual line so it's a little bit off center let me fix that Right now it's centered. Now you might notice that if I clicked on these, if the students clicked on these, they would still be able to you know, move them. So to prevent that from happening, let me just fix this up a little. It's not in line and it's bothering me. I feel like I'm just making this worse. Oh my goodness. A little bit better. No, not yet. All right, so I am going to just do one last thing and then I'll stop. Okay, so what I did was then I clicked on download as a JPEG or a PNG image, just any image. And notice it says current slide, so make sure you are clicked on the slide. You download that and then Open up another of these, delete those. I'm going to go to background. Click image, and then you upload an image as the background. That way it doesn't move. Done. All right, so now you cannot move it. OK, so that is how I made that background. And now you know how to make each of these. And the background, you can make your own uh, game. Now, how this works, students cannot drag from one slide into another slide. It just doesn't work that way. So they have to click on it, copy, and then paste.
And then once they paste it, they can move it around to wherever they see fit. Okay, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to show you some of my students' examples. Oops. So this is one example. Uh, the student students to, in the group, they decided to put a carbon in the center because this is present in all these molecules. And I guess this is their quadrant for carbohydrates. This other example here, students put um, proteins not found in a cell membrane. Uh, that would be nucleic acids. Some are formed in chloroplasts. This would be carbohydrates. So this is, my students didn't finish the game, so we're going to be continuing this the next class. Uh, I just want to show you some that I already have. Another example, my students actually put labels in each of the quadrants, and then they um, started putting their cards in. So that's another way that they can do it. Uh, this group also started with the names in the quadrants. Here you see the proteins, uh, words, descriptions associated with proteins. Um, another group, this one actually color-coded themselves, which is pretty cute. <laughs> and you can see that um, this is where they have placed. So this is nucleic acids. This would be um, hmm. I don't know if not all of these are correct, but this is just showing that they're they're still working on this. We're going to continue this on Monday and Tuesday, and it's cute that they are also keeping track of each other's. Uh, words that are used up. So at the end, they should have all of these quadrants filled up with a variety of colors representing each of them. So it shows me that, or it at least it's supposed to show me that each student has contributed to this conversation. You know, just seeing their colors being represented on this activity board. Okay, so it's also really visual, it's kind of cute, it's kind of fun, it's colorful. So yeah, this is the game. I'm really happy with how it's turning out. It's going to get students talking and collaborating with each other because they have to. I pop into each of the breakout rooms to see what they're doing and they can also look up some of this information if they don't already know it. So doing any sort of research for this activity is great because they're just learning more. They're just gaining more knowledge, confirming and clarifying some of these information in regards to these macromolecules. So um, pretty open-ended, just a great source of review, and I'm really happy with this activity, which is why I'm sharing it with you guys. Over here, you may have noticed I just ignored this for the longest time. But on Quizlet, I made a card list with all 36 of these uh, phrases, cards, uh, pictures. On each side, it's the same word or the same information. There's 36 of these, and the purpose of this is to provide randomness in students as they go through the activity and take turns. So they would open this link, click on flashcards, and I'm going to then actually full screen this. They need to make sure that the cards are shuffled. So they click on shuffle, and then they take turns. So the first person would have proteins. They can place that down wherever they want. And then next person would have used as energy source only when other carbs and lipids are in short supply. Still proteins, and so they would go here, find the corresponding card, and place it in this in their quadrant as they support their reasoning as to why it belongs in that quadrant. And then 
long-term energy storage, some reform of chloroplasts. So there's all these, and they're going to click through, take turns. And it's perfect for groups of three or four. Each person will have at least nine to 12 uh, attempts. If a student is unable to place it in the correct quadrant, they forego their chance. And that card is then up for grabs when the card comes around a second round. Um, but most students are pretty collaborative and they just keep taking turns and helping each other out, putting each card in the correct quadrant. So if you are interested in this activity, um, I would be happy to share with you. I'm just trying to think of the best way for you guys to indicate your interest to me without, you know, leaving your emails on my YouTube comments for the world to see. You can find me on Instagram. I'll include my Instagram in the description box. If you find me on there and you find my channel, find my channel, Instagram channel, right. If you find my Instagram account, you can follow me and then send me a message to request for a link to this activity and I'll include the link to not this one the, my original where is it I'll send you a link so you can view this and make your own copy as well as a link to this quizlet since trust me this quizlet took a while to make you know so yeah, I would be happy to share, and if you do try out this activity, let me know in the comments to this video how it went. Um, if you have any suggestions on how else you would use this activity, also let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear feedback, and I hope you have enjoyed this informational video. Also, don't forget to like this video if it is helpful, and... As always, you can leave any suggestions for future videos, future activities that you want to see me design and share in future videos. Um, don't forget to subscribe to see my future videos, and I will see you in my next one. Thank you for watching.